Good morning, everybody. I think we're live. I hope I'm right. Let me know how you're doing. It's Friday morning. And how long have we got left? Five days until the end of the season. Manchester United's game against Villarreal, the Europa League final. That's going to be our final game of the season. And then we go into the summer transfer window. It doesn't actually officially open, I don't think, until the 9th of June. But Manchester United have got a busy summer ahead. There are some serious priorities that need to be achieved in this summer transfer window if we're going to challenge for the Premier League title next year, which has to be Manchester United's priority. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to run through an article from The Athletic this morning from Laurie Whitwell, a really in-depth article looking at Manchester United's priorities. Is it a striker? Is it a right winger? Is it a central defensive midfielder? Is it a centre-back? What targets are there? I'm going to run through all of that. Make sure if you enjoy this stream as I'm doing it, make sure you drop a like on it. Make sure you leave your comments. If you've got any questions you want to send in, send in your super chats. They should be working on this stream. But let's not waste any time and let's get straight into it. Because, as I said, this article from The Athletic is very, very good. If you haven't already subscribed to The Athletic, you make sure you do because Laurie Whitwell... Carl Anker, Andy Mitten, fantastic guys, fantastic content. And this in particular, as I said, Manchester United's summer transfers. Kane would transform the attack. And what about Ronaldo? There's lots to run through in this article. There's lots about Harry Kane. There's lots about, well, Ronaldo's mentioned. There's lots about Erling Haaland, Jaden Sancho, Rafael Varane, Jules Conde, Declan Rice. I mean, there's just a bucket load of things and a bucket load of people to talk about. Lots of comments coming in. You're all watching from on Facebook. You're all watching on YouTube. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. We've got one there. Where did I see that from? Someone's watching from Jamaica. Let me see what your name was so I can shout you out. We've got Mallow watching from Jamaica. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining in. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. And as I said, let's run through this article. I'm going to read through it and you can read through it with me. Laurie Whitwell, absolutely right when he says this at the very start. A pivotal summer awaits Manchester United and their ambitions to become a genuine title challengers again with several positions in need of strengthening because it's obvious that United have made some real progress this year. Even the biggest doubters of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could admit that there has been some serious progress this year and I've enjoyed it. But certainly in the last month, We've seen the shortcomings. of. We all know the shortcomings are there, but when you take that starting 11 away, the strength of the squad just isn't there. And let's be honest, is that strength of that starting 11 good enough to challenge Man City? I don't think it is. And that's part of the issue. Loads of you guys. We've got Ivan watching. Uh, was it no, Ismail watching from Nigeria on Facebook. We've got Kelvin watching from Zambia. We've got Nikhil on Facebook from India. We've got Roy watching from Ireland. Not Roy, not that Roy anyway. Jeffrey watching from Bangalore and El Rico watching from South Africa. Lots and lots of you from all around the world. As I said, if you've got any questions about the summer transfer window that you want to ask, get your super chats in. I'll ask them. I'll read them out. But I want to read through this article because there's a lot of really important points that Laurie makes. A lot of interesting information. It's going to be a longer video because there's lots of United targets to talk about. But the first target here that he speaks about is Erling Haaland. And he discusses about how Raiola, you know, he's his agent. It became clear that the cost of any deal for the 20-year-old Borussia Dortmund striker would surpass all expectations. 150 million, 500,000 pounds a week for Haaland. Would you want United to pay that? Type yes or no now. Let me know what you think about that. But that is a lot of money. That's like Ronaldo wages. Laurie goes on to say, to that end, Woodward informed Solskjaer that the cost of Haaland will be too prohibitive, prohibitive and that it should be put on hold. Multiple sources believe Dortmund's public stance that Haaland will in fact stay with them for another season. Now Champions League qualification has been secured. Uh, it's a lot of money and it's a lot of money given, which go down here, as you can see, that £64 million release clause kicks in next summer. Is anyone really going to pay 150 million this summer when you know that you can get him for 150 next summer? Sorry, a lot less. I'm looking at the comments here. There's tons coming in and they're all saying no. 
pretty much all saying no. I wouldn't say not, wouldn't say every single one saying no, but let's go for an 80-20 split. And I completely agree to you. Agree with you, sorry. And as Laurie states here, look, that part there is 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 the important part when it comes to Haaland or Kane or anybody. We'll get into Kane next. But Anderson Cavani recommitting for another year eases the pressure on United to find an established striker. But as Solskjaer stated this week, the veteran Uruguayan's presence does not end the search. I'll speak about Harry Kane next, but it's an important point because United, look, if Cavani did not sign that contract, I think you could probably argue that striker might have been United's priority. You could certainly make an argument for it. You know where I stand on it. I don't think that a striker will ever be United's priority this summer. My priority is a central defensive midfielder, which I will get into next. And if not that, then maybe a centre-back second, but certainly not a striker. Let's read a few of your comments out here before we move on to the next. We've got Burke over on YouTube saying that Kane is going to Spain or Man City. The idea of Kane going to Man City is pretty terrifying, if you be honest. But let's see what Laurie has written about Harry Kane. In that context, Harry Kane's desire to leave Tottenham Hotspur becomes especially relevant. Kane has been on United's list since January, with their recruitment staff aware of his increasing determination to secure a transfer to a club offering greater prospects of winning trophies. And that's an important thing to understand about Harry Kane. Because if Harry Kane does leave Spurs, and if you haven't watched that Gary Neville interview over on Gary's, what's it called? The Overlap? The Over? I don't know what it's called. Gary Neville's got a new YouTube channel. Uh, interviewing Harry Kane. And it's clear that Harry Kane wants to leave Spurs. But it's also clear that Harry Kane will not throw in a transfer request. Will not, uh, will not, you know, he won't pub. Well, he, I, mean, I suppose that is publicly angling for a move. That's exactly what that interview helps do. But, Harry Kane, if he leaves Spurs, it's to win the Premier League if he stays in the Premier League. And in that sense, City is the obvious choice. And City won the league, let's be honest, at a canter this year. And they did it without a bloody striker. Let alone if you go and sign Harry Kane. Let's read a few of your comments here. Uh, Tan Joseph there, you're making the point there. Oh, well, <laughs> Ivan McLean, Lukaku to City. Could you imagine that? <laughs> he did really well at Inter. Look, Lukaku just wasn't the right striker for United. No one ever said that he was a terrible striker. He just did not suit United. Um, Tan on YouTube there, kind of making the point that I'm making there. Where is that comment going? There it is. Kane wants to win some trophies. We are not ready. I wouldn't say we're not ready. We're a few players short of competing with City. There's no reason that we couldn't be ready next year if we didn't sign the right players. But if, he, if, if winning the Premier League is what Kane wants, then City is the obvious choice. Let's go on to keep reading. The Athletic reported Kane's resolution in April, uh, talking about how Kane and Lee and Levy, and obviously Daniel Levy's a big, big issue here. Kane's saying that he controls his future in that interview, but in reality, he signed a contract with Spurs and Spurs control his future as much as Harry Kane wants to try and suggest otherwise. Let's read another few of your comments out here. Ismail, I think Kane should be coming in this summer and one central, one centre-back and one centre-mid, Rice or Ndidi. I, well, I think if you sign Harry Kane, you don't sign anybody else. I don't think United will be able to afford signing anybody else given how much Kane will cost. How much would he cost here? We've got, look, it's going on here. Laura, it's, it's quite in depth, in depth, this bit on Harry Kane. Obviously, it's the biggest talking point after Kane's interview, where he's basically made it clear that he wants to leave Spurs. 120 million plus add ons would facilitate a move. United are one of at least two clubs to have made a direct inquiry to Spurs with, in, with a response not exactly extinguishing ambitions. There, there are reports within the industry that Spurs are revising centre forward targets. The role of starter will be available next season. So, Spurs maybe behind the scenes doing the groundwork and preparing for the fact that Harry Kane could be leaving. And I look, ever since Spurs had that season under Poch where they nearly won the league, it was inevitable that their team, player by player, was just going to be picked apart. And that's what's happened. That's what's happening. And I'm surprised Kane stayed that long, but Kane's a very loyal player. So maybe I shouldn't be too surprised, but it clearly, clearly could be this summer where he leaves. Let's keep reading what Laurie had to say about United's summer transfer priorities. A quick break. If you're new and there's loads of you watching, there's loads of you commenting, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you drop a like and share it on Facebook and follow the page. I'm going to be doing lives like this every single day, hopefully from next week onwards, 9.30 UK time every single day throughout the summer, bringing you all the latest news and your engaging comments. Let's read a few of these comments out here. Boru saying, why would you get Kane if it was possible to get Haaland? 
Now, in that sense, I would agree with that comment. Out of the two, I'd rather sign Haaland. Or would I? Because Harry Kane seems like he's, he's in his prime. Harry Kane's not really going to angle for a big move away if he does move to United. He could be at United for three, four, five, six years, happy in the Premier League. Erling Haaland, if he joined, would he just angle for a big move away in a couple of years' time and force himself to Real Madrid? Man, something that could happen. Um, Bailu Lukaku back, says Mac. Let me know in the comments. Say yes or no. Would you want United to start Lukaku back? I'll be interested to know what you say because he was certainly very good at Inter this year. Um, let's have a look. Buy Kane and Haaland. Will cost a lot, a lot of money. I don't think the Glazers... Oh, sorry, but Kane and Haaland. It's, it's a point. Look, the Glazers don't really spend much anyway. And, and bear in mind that the Glazers' strategy, which I exposed previously, the Glazers' strategy at United was always to spend big when we're not inside the top four. And when you get in the top four and you've got Champions League money to not spend as much next summer, that has to be something that changes. That has to be something that United keep on top of. Not, not, not keep on top of, but this has to be the this has to be the season where United build on the season that we've had next year and follow up. We only done that once. That was Mourinho. But I think we went from third to second when it was it Liverpool City ran away with the league. We weren't even that close. But typically United don't spend when we're inside the top four. And I hope that changes this summer. Tons of you comments coming in about Lukaku. No, 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 no. <laughs> Matt, how you doing, Matt? Only if that donkey's first touch has improved. I mean. He did have a bad first touch, but I think we were hypercritical of it. And he's done very, very well in Italy. It suits him out there. It just, Lukaku jarred with the United fans because he just didn't feel like a United striker. And that's, you get certain feels of players. And that's that's a, a big reason I feel why Lukaku, the relationship between United and Lukaku fans was how it was. I'm going to keep reading. Keep reading this excellent article by Laurie. What's the next point here? The cost could be offset with Lingard, valued at 25 million. I think that's a fair valuation for him. Alternatively, Spurs have a long-standing interest in Anthony Martial, who would command a higher price than Lingard, but also happens to be a favourite of... I don't care if he's a favourite of Joel Glazer. Anthony Martial, man. Really wanted it to work out with him, but I think this whole season, it's not as if we're getting angry because he's had a bad week or two. And obviously, he's been injured for a long time, but Martial not the season just gone, the year before when he finished on, what was it, 22, 23 goals. Great season of progress. Disappeared this year. Gone off the radar. Not in Euro 2021 squad. I think the ship has sailed on United even thinking about relying on Martial as an out-and-out number nine. Lots more talking about Harry Kane here. Not really talking about Gareth Bale. Another source pointed out how Gareth Bale's world record sale to Real Madrid was only confirmed at the end of the 2013 summer window so that Spurs were able to buy replacements with the money they'd be getting for him without price being hyped up. The terms were bailed had been agreed weeks before. Now, that's kind of a good point. Yeah, if they're going to sell Kane, sell him quick so they can spend the money. But I don't know. I don't really, th I'll be honest, I don't really think that I'd want United to go in for Kane for the price that Kane would cost. I, I think United do have bigger priorities, which is exactly what this video is about. And it's an interesting point, right? Because look, look how much of this article we've already read. Lots and lots. Hasn't been one mention of a defensive midfielder yet and hasn't been one mention of a centre-back yet. And that's the interesting part. Look, attackers are sexy. Defenders aren't as sexy. But United don't need sexy. We've already got sexy. Bruno Fernandes, Edison Cavani, Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood. We've got goals, Paul Pogba. We've got plenty of goals. What we don't have is the solidity behind them. I'll get into that later in the article because there's a certain player that comes up first. Not Danny Ings, although he's being mentioned. Agents connected to Juventus insist Cristiano Ronaldo could genuinely leave Italy this summer in a situation that staff at Old Trafford are monitoring. It is a perennial debate, but failure by Juventus to qualify for the Champions League is set to trigger Ronaldo's exit plans. Even if Juventus currently fifth do claw their way back into the top four, Ronaldo will consider his options, although staying in Italy remains attractive in terms of the amount of players that are taxed on income. Do you want United? I think I've done this before. I'll do it again because there's plenty of you watching. Do you want United to go back in for Ronaldo? 
if he's available this summer, is it a good idea for United to think about bringing Ronaldo back for one, maybe two seasons? Could he be a, like Bruno Fernandes was a catalyst to get us to this point, could Cristiano Ronaldo be the catalyst to take us from that to challenging properly for the Premier League and the Champions League again? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below and I will read them out. Because let's be honest, Ronaldo's the best player we've ever had in the Premier League. That that season, 2007-8, woo, 42 goals. We won the double. Ronaldo was untouchable. I mean, he's a lot older now. He's a completely... He's a far, far more rounded player. Completely more rounded. You know, when he left, even though he was incredible when he left United, he turned himself into a pure number nine at Real Madrid and won, what was it, four, five Champions Leagues? Insane amount. But <laughs> needless to say, there's quite a few comments coming in. I'll ring a few. Ryan Curtis, bring Ronnie back, win the lot, all the pots, all the, I mean, you'd certainly be in a better position. And the, 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 I can't help but be excited. Every single year, I tell myself, don't get excited about it. Don't even talk about it, Sam. Every single year, it comes back. But Ronaldo's reaching that age now. What is he, like 35? He's, re he's reaching that age now that he's only got a few years left. Even a machine like Ronaldo has only got a few years left. Okay there. Ronaldo, that ship has sailed. I mean, he's still banging in goals left, right, and center. And... I don't think anybody could argue that Ronaldo would pretty much improve every single team in world football. And it, and it wouldn't be a, a long-term signing. It will be a year or two, but Cavani's not a long-term signing, is he? doesn't mean he's not going to have an impact. Let's go on to talk it here. Solskjaer is still in touch with his former United teammate who provided a character reference for Bruno Fernandes. Thanks that, Ronnie. Um, the wages would see, the wages involved would see David De Gea surpass as United's top owner. But given United's pedigree, a reduced transfer fee owing to his deal in Turin expiring. Look at that. 39 goals in 52 games this season. He's 36 and he's scoring 39 in 52. My God, Ronaldo is ridiculous. Ronaldo is ridiculous. Ridiculous. We, we, we genuinely have been lucky to live through Ronaldo and Messi. I know it's, it's, I know it's not easy to understand that when you're living through it, but when you're old and grey and you look back, just enjoy that. But let's move on from Ronaldo. Looking at these comments, if I'm looking at majority, I would say the majority, of, in fact, I wouldn't say majority. There's a big split there, huge split between yes or no for Ronaldo for plenty of reasons. And I can understand both reasons. On the one hand, you've got Ronaldo still doing 39 goals in 52 games. On the other hand, he's 36. He's not the player he was. He would command a ridiculous amount of wages. He would take away from where our, maybe our bigger priorities would be this summer. But the counter argument is always going to be, it's Cristiano Ronaldo. I can understand that. But anyway, let's go back to the main man from last summer, Jaden Sancho. Haven't actually spoken about him yet. The 21-year-old remains of serious interest to United. And multiple sources believe that after the anguish of last summer's window, a move to United... 12 months on is highly realistic. Dortmund are more open than they were back then to selling a player who now has two years left on his contract with the price coming down from 110 to around 80. Some even believe 70 million would be enough. Let me know in the comments now, how much do you think is a fair price for Jaden Sancho this summer? Let me know and I'll read. I'll have a look and I'll see the majority. I'll see, see the average. I'll try and make it make one up. And as I said before, if you've got any more questions you want to ask me directly, make sure you get your Super Chats in because I'm pretty sure I've got the Super Chats working now, having not worked in the last few streams. But technical issues, we're getting past them. Wages and agent fees, both of which were agreed, agreed last year, remember that, should not be an issue. And Sancho will be welcomed into a squad that contains a close friend in Marcus Rashford. Agent Marcus doing the job. The pair are said to regularly play video games online together. Well, that's nice. Very nice for them. Other clubs will look into a move for Sancho, but United appear at the front of the queue for an England forward who, after a difficult start to the season, has been back to his scintillating best recently. Sancho would undoubtedly represent the marquee signing that sources at United say their budget allows for. Now, I'm not saying that our budget doesn't allow for it, but are we really going to sign Sancho and then go out and sign a defensive midfielder? and then go out and sign a centre-back? 
Or is it a case of if we sign Sancho, that's going to be our summer done? And that's that's the the quandary for United fans because we all want Sancho. We're all desperate for a right winger. It's obvious that we need one. Mason Greenwood's doing well there, but I think Mason Greenwood's future lies through the middle, personally, because of his natural finishing ability compared to Rashford. Rashford's a, Rashford's a cutting on the left and just put your fucking foot through it. That's Rashford's attacking and striking style. Mason Greenwood's far more cultured, far more craft to his game. Left foot, right foot, inside the boot, outside the boot, soft shot, curled shot. He's just, he's got a much better Arsenal as a striker than I think Rashford ever will. Right, let's read a few of your comments out. How much do you think Jaden Sancho would be worth? We've got George saying 90 mil. Got Pratik saying 70, 70. And Graham, you agree. Jono, you're saying 75. Sammy Sam on Facebook, you're saying 75 to 80 mil. Zande saying 65 to 75. And it's is going bargain basement with $20 million. If I'm being honest, I think minimum 70. Minimum 70 for Sancho. I think somewhere between 70 and 80 would be a very fair price for Sancho. Uh, given last summer was, as it, as it says here, 100, 110 million. Remember that? It was a mad summer. I don't know how much we offered in the end, but it wasn't enough. And an interesting conversation that could be had down here, Jack Grealish, also subject of interest from City, represents an alternative option. But Villa are expected to ask for a fee higher than 80 million because he's just signed a new contract. Remember that? United Scouts have been impressed by Grealish's development this year. I have too. Grealish last year, I heard noises about him, but Grealish this year, I've watched a lot more of him and he is, he's a big fish in a small pond at Villa. That's the way it looks. I don't know whether it would, if you flip it and he's a small fish in a big pond, whether he would have that same sort of impact, but he certainly looks like he's got it. United Scouts have been impressed by his development and having established himself for England, the prospect of Champions League football in a season where he'll turn 26 inevitably appeals to him. So let me know in the comments now. Grealish or Sancho? Simple one. Who would you go for out of those two? Because if they're going to be around about the same price, I mean, they're kind of different footballers, though. Grealish, you know, he does play more out on the left than he does on the right, but very different styles. Grealish is more of a, of a playmaker through the middle. Sancho is more like a playmaker with real pace, direct, on the wing. More of a, a key signing in a, in a particularly priority area for United rather than Grealish who may well just be competing for Bruno Fernandes for that spot and let's be honest ain't nobody getting near Bruno Fernandes and that's a big reason why Donny van der Beek hasn't had much time there you go look ultimate United ultimately went for Donny van der Beek last summer but the Dutchman's future is unclear after a tough debut season particularly if Paul Pogba stays I do really feel for Donny van der Beek you know he's clearly a an excellent excellent footballer but it's just at the moment it's just there's just no room for him. There's just no room for him at the moment. Uh, in terms of Bruno Fernandes is better than him. Paul Pogba is better than him. And he's not ever going to play in a pivot. He played there the other day and he doesn't play in a pivot role. It just does not happen for him. So he's effectively waiting and sitting behind both of those. Super chat here from Abhishek. Chat, thank you for sending that in, buddy. Squad balance. Right wing, central defensive midfielder, centre-back or Kane Ronaldo. I'll leave that one up there. That's a really good question. If you're if you're only going to sell shot, what do you want this summer? Do you want the priority signing of a Kane or Ronaldo? Not priority signing, the marquee signing of a Kane or Ronaldo? Or would you rather go for the more boring signings, but maybe the more important signings, like a central defensive midfielder or a centre back? What would you choose if that's the two options? And I think that's something that Solskjaer is really going to have to push for because i think it's obvious which is which is a smarter and more sensible option but if ed woodward still has any sort of control which i really hope he doesn't but if he does then you know what he's going to push for that guy loves a marquee signing absolutely loves it right let's see down here we've got michael whittle you're saying definitely a center back and a central defensive midfielder Corey luke taylor you are saying we don't need a central defensive midfielder. Uh, it's you're saying a central defensive midfielder is more important. Oh, click the wrong comment there. Where did that go? Oh, never mind. I completely disagree with you, Corey. We one million percent need a central defensive midfielder. We have done it was for me. It was our priority last summer. We didn't sign one, and I still think it's priority this summer. 
Let's keep going in the article, though. As I said, it's a big article, isn't it? Axel Twanzebi is worth an eight-figure fee. What, is he leaving? Nah, don't think Twanzebi is leaving anyway. While Dean Henderson will explore his options if another season largely as deputy to De Gea waits. I'm still very convinced that if the right figure comes in, the right offer comes in, it might it might end up being like a loan fee first. I can see De Gea leaving this summer, especially with his wages, especially if you've got Dean Henderson. It just makes sense. And, makes sense, and I keep saying it as well, makes sense for him personally with his family. He's just had a new baby with a Dern. She stayed in Manchester for so long. She'll be hankering to go back to Spain. And it just seems like the right one. United are in negotiations to sign Tom Heaton on a free transfer. So it'll be like De Gea leaving, Henderson going up to number one and Tom Heaton coming in. Again, kind of makes sense. Let's scroll down here too. United are looking at defensive reinforcements too. Well, I should think so. With Rafael Varane high on the centre-back list, his cost would be reduced owing to his Real Madrid contract expiring next summer, although sources close to United feel the Frenchman is minded to sign a new contract at the Bernabeu. Rafael Varane, you remember when he went to Real Madrid? I think it was, was it Lens, Lons, that he was at? And then Zinedine Zidane poked his nosy head in and he went to Real Madrid and he went on to become a fantastic... We all knew he was going to be fantastic. And I don't think he made the wrong decision because he's won like four Champions Leagues. Can't begrudge that. But Rafael Varane is still a very, very good centre-back and maybe he will be the perfect partner to Harry Maguire. Let me know what you think about Varane. Leave your comments and your super chats about Varane, like witnesses of a game that you don't like or parts that you do like. Do you think he would be the best signing? I think another couple names mentioned here. We've got Pau Torres and Jules Conde. Sevilla's Jules Conde, who's just made it into the squad for France at Euro 2021. So I'll be watching that. That'll be interesting to see. But centre-back. United clearly, I think, need a centre-back. I think Harry Maguire has shown his importance this season. But Harry Maguire has also, on plenty of occasions, shown his weaknesses. And those weaknesses, when they're exposed, they're really horrible. Uh, this pace is obviously is a big weakness. but. When you get a partner that plays alongside him well, when Bailly is playing well, when he's not mad, then he's not doing crazy stuff. It, it does work, but I think Bailly is a bit like Martial in that when he's great, he's great, but I don't feel I can rely on him for a, a whole season. And that especially is what you need to be able to do with your centre-backs. They have to be the two players of your team that just don't move anywhere. They're there every single week, very reliable and nothing really changes. And that's what United need at centre-back. And that's why we need a partner for Harry Maguire. Uh, there we go. Dermot saying, I think Maguire's injury shows how much we miss him. Need a quality replacement for cover. We will always leak goals if not covered. I think that like, even if we've got Maguire and the teammate, I still think we need a centre-back alongside him. Because Lindelof, again, I'm still not sold on Lindelof uh, as a Premier League centre-back. He's just not physical enough. When it comes to the shoulder barge, Lindelof can just be pushed off so easily. And that's a key weakness of his game that people can expose. You can't expose that in Harry Maguire because he's a tank. But you can expose his pace. And I think someone like Varane, I think he could be good. T over on YouTube saying Varane's the best signing we could get. Anim, you're saying he'd be perfect. Okay, Aboke, sorry, saying Varane switches off quick. I haven't watched enough of him this season to understand whether or not he is switching off quick. Um, but I think a centre-back, I don't. I wouldn't put a centre back above a, a right winger, but I would put a holding midfielder. And finally, here towards the end of the article, hello Declan Rice. Declan Rice is a primary target for the holding midfielder slot. Let me know what you think about Declan Rice in the comments. Do you think Rice would be a best, the better option? Do you think Ndidi from Leicester would be the better option? They just signed. They're signing Sumé, I think, from Lille. Anyway, from the front from Liga this season. So. Leicester's recruitment's been insanely good over the last few years. Insanely good. So they've got Ndidi. What about Ruben Neves from Wolves? You all know how much I love Ruben Neves. I've, I've, oh my God, the amount of times I've mentioned Ruben Neves' name. And I feel like this summer could be a, a very easy summer to get him. But Declan Rice, he'd be like, what, 80 million? Not that I'm saying that's how much I think he's worth. But I'm saying, how much do I think West Ham would ask for? I think they'd probably ask for 80 million. Kessie from AC Milan says Pete Tope. I mean, that's an excellent comment there because he was absolutely mustard 
against United in both legs, wasn't he? Both of them central midf- midf- midfielders were. Um, but Paul there, Declan Rice clearly is a very good player. But his price tag will certainly be inflated. And at, like I mean there, and I, I agree, Maguire was overpriced for what Maguire is. Uh, that's the United tax, it's the Premier League tax, it's the, everything that gets added on top of it. Who would I rather sign? Having watched... I'd rather sign Ndidi than Rice. That's a personal preference. And I'd rather sign Neves than both of them. And again, that's a personal preference. And maybe Neves isn't as uh, as much of a pure defensive midfielder as someone like Rice is, but I think Neves has the... Bear in mind, he's only like 23 as well. I think he's got the ability to... Oh, my God. He's, his ceiling for me is the highest out of those completely. And that's why I would love Ruben Nevers. I've been saying it for so long. Uh, but that's not the only one down here. Look, right backs. A right back to support Aaron Wambasaka is also on the cards. Prices allowing. And Kieran Trippier is a leading candidate. I remember when Kieran Trippier's name was first mentioned. And I was like, what the fuck? Why are we going after Kieran Trippier? Now I completely understand it. And my position on that has completely changed. I think Kieran Trippier would be an excellent signing. And I think if we're going to sign, people will be like, uh, but what about Max Aaron's? It'll be more exciting to get Max Aaron. Sure, it would be more exciting to get Max Aaron's, but Max Aaron's would come in underneath Aaron Wambasaka. And the thing that's going to help Wambasaka's game go from here to there is not going to be a young player coming underneath him. It's going to be an experienced player helping him learn the craft of the game. Because Wambasaka's come on leaps and bounds this year on his own already. Uh, and the only reason that we haven't really talked about it more is because Luke Shaw has been playing even better. It is what it is. But wan has certainly got better. He's certainly improved, and I think he can continue to get better. But I think the thing that's going to make that happen is signing someone experienced. So I think the idea of signing Trippier is a good idea. Let me read a few of your comments out here. Let me see if anyone's talking about Kieran Trippier. No one's talking about Trippier. Nope. Poor guy. Poor guy. But we've got a right-back mention there. We've got a central defensive midfielder mentioned there. We've got a centre-back mentioned there. We've got a right winger mentioned there. And we've got a striker mentioned there. Let me know in the comments now and leave your super chats as well. What's your what's your priority list? One, two, three. What's your most important signing, second most important signing, and third most important by the position? So as I said, you've got centre-back, central defensive midfielder, striker, right winger, and right back. They're the five positions where you can think that United could probably do with signing players this summer who or what positions go for what positions let's just do that as a one two three let me know what yours are and i'll read yours out mine central defensive midfielder absolute and it's not even close that's how important i think that position is in terms of the whole balance of manchester united's team it, it balance is key you know we've got great attackers in that team but sometimes we're way too attack heavy and we don't have that one player there who we can rely on in defensive midfield, which is why we have to play Fred and McTominay. And by doing that, we're playing two holding midfielders against like West Brom and shit. And we're taken away from our attack because of that. Sign a defensive midfielder who can do it on his own. And we don't have to do that. You can play Popper and Bruno in a in a standard 4-3-3 with one holding midfielder. And it opens everything up. I don't th- for people who don't think that central defensive midfield is a priority haven't really thought about that enough. I don't think anyway. Right, lots of comments coming in here. We've got Pratik on YouTube. You're saying number one, central defensive midfielder, number two, right winger, and number three, centre back. We've got Avishek. You're saying defensive midfielder first with a centre back second and a right wing third. Uh, Vish, Vishwanth, Vishwanath, you're saying central defensive midfielder, centre back, and right winger. Anthony, you're saying CDM, right wing, and then centre back. Bode, on YouTube, you're saying central defensive midfielder, centre back, and right winger. And one more central defensive midfielder, right winger, and centre back. And I would probably have that as my three, if I'm honest. Right there. Where did that comment go? It was disappeared. Oh, bloody hell. There's so many comments coming in. I can't really keep up with them. <laughs> nice. If you're new, subscribe. I'll wait five seconds now. I've only got 1% on my battery. Need to charge that. Right. You've all subscribed. Now make sure you like the video too, because it's. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be doing daily live videos of this, hopefully from next week onwards. Loads of you have been asking me to do it for a long time. I haven't really had the technical setup, but I've got there eventually. And it's going to look a little bit sexier on Monday as well. It's going to be very engaging, getting you directly involved, 
getting your comments and your super chats on the screen and getting you involved in the community. That's what I want to do. But central defensive midfielder, that has to be our priority. And then I will probably say right winger. And then I probably would say centre back. I think that one you could really argue, right wing or centre back, which is the bigger priority for United? And I think on one day I might say right wing and another day I might say centre back. I reckon I'd chop in between the two uh, because it's really easy to argue the both. Right wing, we don't have a right wing and it adds a lot of imbalance to our team that's forcing Marcus Rashford out on the right wing when he should never be playing out on the right wing ever. But a centre back. We need a partner for Harry Maguire. Surely that's more important. Then at the same time, if we sign a central defensive midfielder, you negate the importance of the, of focusing on your centre-backs because you've got a defensive midfielder that does all of that. I don't know. There's so many things. There are so many priorities for United that this summer we are not going to sign them all. And that's why it's going to be a tricky summer for United because if we're playing football manager, we sign a defensive midfielder, we sign a centre-back, we sign a right-winger, we sign right-back cover, and we probably sign a striker as well. We win the quadruple next year. Easy. But it's real life. And it's the Glazers. And they don't do that. And they never will. So we have to think about the priorities. And I think it's important that United sell players. Lingard. Um, I would sell De Gea as well. I would let Mata go. Those three off the top of my head. Phil Jones, get out of my club. Please, you fraud. Get rid of those players, you free up a big amount of wages and you free up a decent amount of money. That in itself would probably pay for a defensive midfielder, which means you've then got the budget to spend elsewhere, whether that's a centre-back or a right-winger or a striker. depends on what you're doing. Let's read a few more of your comments out here. Neil Driscoll. Good morning to you too, Neil. Uh, Varante United for £60 million, says Martin. Due to Real Madrid is leaving. Do you mean uh, Zidane leaving Real Madrid? That could be. Roy watching from Corfu. Very nice. Hope it's sunny there, my friend. Um, there's so many things that could happen this summer. I'm excited for it because I'll be honest, I got bored with football, got bored with how things were going and it's nice to have a summer to look forward to. We've got the Euros coming up. That'll be fun, hopefully. Uh, England winning the Euros would be quite nice. But United certainly need to have a big summer. And for me, defensive midfield is a priority. I really enjoyed this live stream. I don't know how many of you have commented United zone there. Look, why don't you come live daily on other channels? As I said, I'll finish on this now. I'll do it one more time. I'll say one more time. If you haven't subscribed, come on, people. Get involved. I know over the last quite a while, my videos have been off, sporadic, not consistent. Things are going to change. Things are changing over the summer. I want to be doing more live content. I intend to do this every single day, Monday to Friday at 9.30 to make a consistent appointment with you every single morning. We talk about all the latest news and I'll bring it to you on here on United People's TV, on Facebook as well, as well as YouTube. But I really enjoyed it today. We've got Martin watching from Adelaide, Australia. Good morning. Is it good morning? Good evening to you. I'm not sure. And Darren watching from New Zealand. I always, find, I always love it. I look Tony watching from New Zealand as well. How you doing, buddy? I always love how many people all around the world love United. We all join together. It is good fun. But make sure, look, I didn't say the comment. Anmar said it. Smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. If you are new in town, make sure, because next week, it's going to be plenty more of these live streams. I really enjoyed this today. Really enjoyed talking to you about the priorities for United this summer. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, it'll be exciting. Hopefully, we are not left with another summer where... It's going to be United chasing Sancho and then not signing anybody. Let's hope it didn't happen. But make sure you subscribe. Make sure you have a good weekend. It's Friday today, so enjoy your weekend. Wolves on Sunday at 4. I'll be here, obviously, with my match reaction. I might start doing my match reactions live as well. That could be fun. But anyway, see you for Wolves, and then I'll see you for Villarreal. Make sure you enjoy your weekend. Drop a like on the video.